The games in this book were written over 40 years ago and today we're going to be testing a few out on some old hardware and then recreating them in Python. So here I've got the Computer Battle Games book from Osborne Publishing, published in 1982. And if I bring it over here, we can have a look through. There's lots of variety of different games in here. It starts with robot sci-fi games, all the way to cowboy shootout here, um, desert tank battle. This one is very Robin Hood-esque with the man and his bow and arrow and then more sort of sci-fi games. And one thing I like about this book is that I have found with other 80s command line game books that they do tend to be limited in the style of games. There seem to be a lot of guess the number games and similar stuff like that. Whereas this one, there is a lot of different variety in the styles of games, from like memory games, stuff that requires keyboard inputs and timings. So that is very cool. Um, and the game that we're going to be doing today or to start off with is vital message which is a memory game and the retro computer i'm going to be using today is the bbc micro a staple of british schools in the 80s i think almost all of them had one and one of my personal favorites from the era mainly because it was the only one i grew up around although i had mine when i was around five years old in 2008 not the 80s but let's get this turned on and we can get to programming so I'm going to start typing this program into the BBC here. And I will say I am quite spoiled with the BBC full keyboard today over the rubber spectrum keyboard I was using in my last 80s coding video. And if you haven't seen that video yet, I will leave a link to it in the description. Um, but I'm going to carry on typing this program in and I'll see you when it's done. I've typed that entire program into the BBC and now all that we have to do is give it a test. So I'm going to type run in here and hope that we have no errors. So I press return. The program is running now and it is a vital message. And I have read the exposition on here, which tells us we are laser communications operators intercepting robot messages. And the way it works is it has a difficulty level um, between four and 10. And if you input the difficulty, it prints a string of that length that you then have to remember then give it back to the computer and it will tell you if you got it right or wrong. So if I give it a test here and I'll start really simple with four and remember that string, T, 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 X, E. We'll return that. Message correct, the war is over. So we've got that right. And I'll just try it again and get the message wrong and see how that works. So if I do 10 and that's gonna be really hard to remember. Yeah, I remembered none of that. But if I type in something random here, you got it wrong, you should have sent. And it's got that really long string that I should have sent. Um, so that's all tested. I'm sure we've got the gist of what that program is. And now I'm going to convert it into Python. Just before I do this, I do want to say, as the saying goes, there's multiple ways to skin a cat and there's definitely multiple ways you can do this in Python. I'm just going to run through this quickly, trying to make my code as easy to read and understandable as possible. So I've got everything set up on here. I've just got my IDE open. I'm just using Visual Studio Code. And I've also downloaded Computer Battle Games, the PDF version, just so I can have it on the screen here and it's a bit easier to follow along. So I'm just gonna work through this line by line. So if we start with the first line, line 10, which is just clear screen, and I can do that by import OS. And then os.system, CLS, line, line, clear, that will clear the screen and then the line 20 print vital message oh that in quotation vital message and then line 30 is just an extra line so i can just add that in using slash n there and then the next one is the input so it asks you for a difficulty number and puts it in d so we can do d equals input and then how difficult how difficult, question mark, four to 10. So that will have the input. And then we've got the error checking in line 60. Um, so check your number isn't less than 40 or more than 10. So to do that, I'm just going to put that input statement in a while loop. So while true, and then if I just write an if statement here, just to check, I'm gonna switch it around. So at the moment it checks if it isn't less than four or more than 10, but I'm just gonna check if it is in the right input range. Um, so if D is greater than or equal to four and D is less than or equal to 10, 
then it's going to break out of that loop. And then if not, it will keep you in that loop and you'll have to keep going round like it was on the BBC. Import a new number, um, input a new number that will work. So the next line, line 70, sets up an empty string. So um, equals, there's an empty string. Line 80 is a for loop there. So computer loops around at D times. Each loop, it chooses a letter and adds it to the string. So I'm going to do that. So for I in range D there, um, we can do the random letter. And I'm going to do that just using ASCII letters. So if I import random up here, so we can pick a random letter and then import string. So if I do M plus equals random dot choice um, string dot ASCII. And as it is all uppercase in basic, I'll do ASCII uppercase on this one as well. So that has the loop that will create M. And then we've got to clear the screen again. So I'm just copy paste that statement there. And then print send this message. Print send this message. And then there's another extra line in there. So slash N. And then it prints the message. There's another on a separate line. So another slash. We have M. So that will print out the message there. And we're going to test it. I'm going to test it just to make sure. So if I do the difficulty is four. We have an error. No, I know what the error is. I've got to set that as an int there. So it's there we go. That input is now being converted into an integer. And that should work now. So how difficult if I do four. There we go, it gives me a message of four. And let's just check the error checking we implemented earlier. So if I do three, yeah, it will send me back in circles. If I try 11, yeah. Do 10, there is a string there that is 10 long. So that all works up to this point. So we've got up to that line there, line 140. And the next section is a loop in basic um, that kind of gets your computer stuck in a loop so it kind of stalls for a bit, but obviously with a modern computer, a bit too fast to get stuck in a loop. So I'm just going to use time. So if I import time and do time dot sleep, it's all dependent on the value of D. So I'm thinking if I do it as 0.5 times D there, that means if the difficulty is four, if it's a string of four, it will be on the screen for two seconds. And if it's a string of 10, it'll be on the screen for five seconds, which is about what I think it was in basic. So we'll leave that like that. Then we can move on to 170, which is another clear screen. So clear the screen again. And then 180 is the input. So N equals input. And that just has no message. That's just a blank input. Then 190, this is just the last if statement there, just checking that input. So if n equal equal m, we can do the print there. So print message correct, the war is over. So I'm gonna type that in, message correct. And then on the next line, the war is over and then else so if that isn't correct we can type in you got it wrong you should have sent so print you got it wrong put that on another line you should have sent and then final line found there we can just put M. So that will print the actual string. So that should work if we test that out now. Click run, how difficult. We'll start like I did with the BBC with four. Z-E-D-A. So let's type that in. Enter, message correct, the war is over. So let's try it with 10. So how difficult, do 10. 
messages up on the screen. Again, cannot remember that message. I've typed something random. You got it wrong. You should have sent that is the correct message. Um, so that all seems to work well. So as you can see, that ran pretty much the same way as it did on the BBC Micro. The logic of BASIC and Python is practically the same. So it is fairly easy to convert if you are familiar with both languages. Now I'm going to be typing in a slightly more difficult game called Shootout. Now I've typed out Shootout onto the BBC, so that's all ready to run. And the way that this works, if we look at the exposition again here, is it seems to be a Western style shootout game where you take 10 paces back um, and then the computer gives you a certain amount of time to have to shoot first, otherwise you get killed by your opponent. So I'm gonna run this on the BBC here. So type in run, it goes quite quick, it gives me my 10 paces. He draws and shoots already and I'm dead. Um, so it is very fast. I'm gonna try and get one where I do it first. Draws, yay, I shot first. Um, so the way that works is just press any single key on the keyboard and it will let you shoot and hopefully you shoot fast. Um, but it is very, very fast. So I've already converted that game into Python here and it was a little trickier than the last one I did, mainly because of the keyboard inputs here. Usually if I'm getting inputs in Python, I would just use the input function, um, which obviously waits for an input before doing anything else. But in this program, we needed something that would continuously check for that input and also move on if that input wasn't received. So I did a bit of Googling and found the MSVCRT library that I've imported and used to do that here. So I'm just going to play the game, run, and it's taking its paces and wait for him to draw. But you shoot first, we could do it well. And the one thing I have noticed when I'm doing that now is obviously my program is a lot easier and a lot slower than the one we did at the BBC, which was very frantic. Um, so I'm going to just change that now and make it a bit quicker to match the basic one a bit better. Um, so I've got my sleep um, here, which has the wait time in it, which at the moment is set to half a second, which I'm going to speed up. I'm going to do 0.2 on there and just change that throughout. Um, so I have a randomizer here, so it does randomize the time before he draws and shoots a little bit. I um, mean, I can't change the numbers in there, but I can change the multiplier here to 0.2. And if I just multiply that one by 0.2, it should run a lot quicker. Um, so if we run it again, yeah, that's already going a lot quicker. He draws, oh, he, he killed me because it is a lot faster and a lot more similar to the one on the BBC in BASIC. So hopefully you can see how easy it was to convert those games into a more modern language than BASIC. As well as it being enjoyable, I also found it a very good learning experience. I learned a new way to do keyboard inputs in Python. And if anything, the books are just really well put together and super cool to look at. And if you aren't aware, they're all free to download on the Osborne Books website, and I'll leave a link to that in the description. But that's all for today. I'll see you next time. Whoa, 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 whoa.